Hilma sits atop Sarah, ready to return to the tower. The noise of construction close by. The others will be keeping themselves busy for the next day and a half, giving Hilma the time she needs to return to the tower to seek understanding of what else was hidden there and whether or not any of the tower can be recovered for construction. With the sun high in the sky though, she should have a much more enjoyable journey this time. We can only hope, can't we? And so with that, we begin. Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Cataclysm in a Wood, where there's been a fair amount of construction, a fair amount of effort. The next part of this building is going in as I speak, and it looks like we are doing this in kind of six cubes. No, sorry, that's not six. It'll be nine in total. At least that's the way it seems. And then once that's all done, there's bookshelves and other things that can be added into it. But I like the idea of just having this, you know, decently sized structure. We probably don't need it to be as large as it is. But alas, here we are. And if you have a look over here by the cave, we have managed to clear out pretty much the entire fencing. We are actually in spring now as well, and I believe we're getting close to the point where we're going to be able to start planting, but it's still just a little too cold out at this point. We are just going to be taking Sarah, we won't be taking Gale. We are going to need our hands to grab the hammer along the way, and so let's start making our way up to the north, and things might look a little bit different here, and to a degree, they do as uh, Arturo has been just chopping through pretty much all of the wood that's along here. Uh, so we are going to see that it, it's a lot more barren than it once was, which that's good. That makes it much easier for us to ride through here. There are a few patches that seem to have been kind of torn up, making it somewhat more difficult for us to uh, navigate without trouble. But here we are, back out in the open field. And we need to get to our hammer, don't we? which is up there. Okay, so it's up past this other cave. All right, Hilma, let's get a move on. Just having a look here. Okay, a little bit further. We are actually gonna put safe mode on, um, <laughs> which we immediately have to turn off because there is a pit bull around here somewhere. And there are some of the Triceratopses, I think, that came to visit us when we were knocked off the back of Sarah. <laughs> There it is. It is much faster than us. Even, my God, I can't, I can't, I can't believe this. I cannot believe that. Okay, you know what you're doing, Hilma. You know what you're doing. Okay, pretty good hit. That's another. It's okay. It's okay. All part of the plan. All part of the plan this time. Drawing out the second flintlock. We shoot once. We shoot twice. Second one doesn't do as much damage as I would have hoped. But we're ready to fight this time. Struggling to stand, we get back up and we hammer the antlered hammer for 16. Okay, running, we should be at least a little bit quicker than it. There we go, that's good. A critical hit. It's heavily bleeding right now. It has grabbed us. We're just going to strike. And strike we do. It is down. Okay, we'll drop this for a second here just because we need to try and stop the uh, little bit of bleeding that we have on our arm. But our armor protected us there. And right now it's actually kind of holding us back. Let's take off those gloves. That should give us the dexterity we need. There we go. Okay, gloves back on and we'll wield the quarterstaff and let's put this thing down. An amazing creature that it is. Absolutely phenomenal. So much fun to fight. How are you looking, Sarah? You should be okay, right? Yeah. Yeah, you just got a little spooked when we got uh, <laughs> thrown off the back there. But we're fine. We're totally fine. We'll do the full reloading that we need to do. I'm not concerned about the pit bull right now. It should know better. It should know better and want to stay away. We do have some willow bark tea with us, which we could take to knock back the pain. But it's only mild pain. I think we're going to be okay. <sighs> it's dead. We got it. We actually got it. And over here, there it is. That's our hammer. Okay. <laughs> Let's have this thing in hand again. Savior, it's a little damaged, but that was from the previous work that we'd done with it. Okay. All right. We're going to continue on northwards. We are going to be running 
or rather Sarah is going to be running and we're going to make sure that we have safe mode turned on so that if any nasties uh, leap out at us we'll be a little bit more prepared and there is the cart okay well it's good to see it in one piece do we need it right now hmm I guess we could get it couldn't we yeah let's uh let's jump off and get you hooked back up and we are gonna have to kind of try and reverse on out of here aren't we uh-huh yeah there is an issue with the controls it seems but that's fine <laughs> we're on the move again and we are going to come to a stop around about here there we go if we do have any trouble here we should be able to um well, we'll be okay. I am a little bit nervous as to like what we might find in there. And also with it being spring, it's going to be pretty warm. So we're going to take some things off and just uh, <laughs> hope for the best in there, really. Okay, we're kind of down to the essentials here. We have the spare strap. We have our tool belt, which actually, which actually has the paper cartridges in. That's quite handy. Uh, we've obviously got our two back holsters as well let's make our way into here uh, it is going to get hot real fast and we're going to go pretty much right up to where we remember hearing sounds in well one of the cells okay up the other side there and right it was over here we still okay okay yeah well that's where the sludge is coming from it is a hive Hulk. The bloated torso of this gigantic corpse is wrapped in sticky black fibers. Beneath the wrapping, there is a strange rhythmic movement, grotesque to behold. Yeah, we do not need to set this thing free. Nope. Nope. I think, uh, I think we're going to leave that in there. That's perfectly fine by me. Yep. I want nothing to do with that. Okay. So now construction side of things for us to be able to construct with the uh the resin here we need resin pods so what do we have here that's a resin chunk you know have nothing you can craft with it so the chunks they don't help us it's almost like a piece of sea glass frosted and gritty with edges rounded off it's somewhat warm to the touch so if we were to get resin pods how and what would we get them from? Probably from the rest of the stuff that's in here, if I had to guess. We would probably need to try and deconstruct some of the furniture in here. We need prying and we need screwing, which we do have if we go and grab or rather just wear our backpack. That should have everything that we need in it. We're all feeling pretty sick. We've got our firearm repair kit. We've got the blacksmith repair kit. That should be everything that we need. We don't need to have savior in our hands right now. So we'll just leave that there. We'll step back into this foul smelling air. So. Glowing tendril. Can we take you apart? Uh, no. Cannot. So we can't work with that. Scarred lump. Is that a scarred lump? No, it's not. That is. Okay, can we get rid of you? No, we cannot. I mean, it, it kind of makes sense, but uh, okay, well, in that case, shall we just grab the hammer and just try and do some smashing, or are we just going to get fetid goop? Which I'm pretty sure the fetid goop only allows us to mask our scent. Yeah, okay, all right, well, <laughs> let's go grab the hammer. Savior, let's go and ask some questions of well let's say the glowing tendril first of all we very quickly splorch that and uh then we just have a scarred lump which i guess is the remains of what was here because this isn't a scarred lump here but when we destroy it that's what we're left with okay right well what about the organ pods note that just um that just kind of pops okay so obviously we also have the wafting an enemy can't deconstruct that but we can smash it and we don't get anything out of that we didn't try to deconstruct the pods but i don't yep i think it's something that we can do nope okay hmm interesting i don't know if there is actually anything that we can do here to to get stuff 
mean, I'm kind of tempted to turn everything into discard lumps. Just to start with. So we're just going to go around. We are going to destroy everything here. Which unfortunately is going to make it leak gas. Not the ideal, I suppose, but... There we go. Alright. That's everything removed there. We're just going to pop outside to get our stamina back. We are still trying to understand the enemy here. Okay. That's better. Right. Step back in. And we can't do anything with you, can we? Ah. Ex hmm. Okay. Extrude resin lattice. I mean, yeah. Floor and Ruth, we need a smoothing tool to be able to do that. And this requires pods to be able to get stuff from. Okay, so maybe we need a smoothing tool here then to be able to try and gather any of that. I see. I mean, yeah, it would, would make sense. This nearly opaque plastic floor has a gentle curve from wall to wall. But in the central areas, it's quite flat. The material is hard, warm to the touch, and slightly damp. Hmm... We're just going to have a search for resin. Yeah, those are the only options for resin. Oh, hang on, this still requires two alien resin pods. So, no, we're not getting anything out of that. The only other thing that I can think of is that sometimes we can use... Um, we can actually activate... We can't activate the hammer. If we brought the pick, we might be able to. But then again, same kind of deal. I don't think that's possible. The walls on the outside are specifically difficult for us to destroy. I do want to go up to the the cages once again. Just because there's a chance that we might have got something from the, from the cages once we smash them apart. That was a bit silly. Same kind of deal. Resin chunks, which we can't do anything with. Okay, well, I guess that answers it for me. We are not going to get what we want here. We're not going to access resin chunks. There, there probably are ways in which to do that. Uh, I do want to grab these long strings just while we're here. Let's go pick those up. Thank you. They're the leftovers from our traps, of course. All right. And that's that then. Okay, well, we're going to drop Saviour into the back of this here, and we're going to chuck the rest of our gear back on. Okay, we're, we're fully geared up here now, grabbing all of that. And we're at a comfortable temperature, maybe, you know, slightly warm. And now we've come all the way out here. I wouldn't mind doing a little bit of exploration over that way, perhaps. So we're going to jump onto the back of Sarah here, and that's exactly what we're going to do. I probably could have looked into trying to bring along, oh my gosh, uh, some super glue to try and fix this here. Actually, in saying that, it's in really good, oh, it's it's the yoke that's damaged, yeah. Uh, we've got a whole family of cats over here. Look at them all. They're doing really good. They're, they're flourishing. Good for you, kittens and cats. Well, we do have a pond over the side and it looks, yeah, <laughs> okay, that is just the edge of the woods. We'll follow it along the whole way. Just to make sure that we don't have anything too interesting out here. No, no, that is the edge of that. Well, okay, I guess, I guess we know. We'll go all the way up there just so that we can see. And then we could, we could go further north. I mean, what's stopping us? It's a decent distance if anything goes wrong, but I feel like after all this time that Hilma has spent inside, it is nice to be back out here again to have the wind in her hair, for it to be just her and Sarah again. Yeah, I think we'll stay out here for a little while. Okay, well here we are. We are at the furthest northern point that we have traveled. And uh, yeah, the last thing that we'd seen down here were, were anthills. We've got a pond and and just, uh, just a pond. I think it's the field tile underneath of it, but yeah. Out into the unknown we go. We can see that there is a moose in this area. We'll be sure to try and respect that moose's space. And once I kind of get an idea of what we're looking at here in terms of terrain, that will uh, inform me of where we want to go, which is probably a little bit more over towards the east for now. And that's kind of the end of the line there. Okay. Let's keep on going around. 
quite a few struthiomas and we got vine beasts and fungal fighters okay where are they they're over there yup and we've got triffids well hot damn interesting there's got to be some kind of growth nearby all right well they're going straight for the dinos so um yeah, I imagine that's going to be a bit of a decent fight. The Vine Beast there as well. I, I feel like this is their territory. They're going to very easily be able to defend that against any of the dinos that are there. And even if the dinosaurs do come back, I don't think it's going to be a problem that gets very, very far from that area. It's also kind of just a dead end. So it's not of any more interest to us. So we'll carry on past the bees and around to the east. Okay, all right, we've been riding for a little further here and there seems to be this very large forest that's blocking off progression to the north. So we're just going to start to come back around towards the south and we're just going to follow it along this side here, which is kind of taking us down along towards the east. We do have a crater over there and oh boy, that is a crater that we can clamber down inside. There's two craters in actual fact. Ah, that's very tempting. I feel like we can't pass that up, can we? No. All right, Hilma, we know how this goes. We need to get prepared to uh, head on down there. So let's get down to business. Okay, I want to see if we can get away with wearing our backpack here. Uh, let's go peek over the edge and peek down. Right. All is well there. I think it's also worth peeking over areas like this, for example. Although I think that just goes straight down. Yeah, not seeing anything that we want there. And there are a few other areas that are kind of cut off towards the side. Let's see. Okay. We can see pretty much everything there. Let's go... Ooh. I think this side's going to serve us best. So, we'll go and climb down. We're all good. And I don't think there's anything on this level that we're interested in. It's just all large rocks, etc. Peek down into this one. Nothing in there, but some very good stuff down there. And this seems like a safe enough space to climb on, so let's do it. Okay. Easy climbing. Absolutely easy. Lots of rock salt here. There's galena. There's hematite two different sources of it actually so we're gonna try and grab the hematite first of all more of it over this side as well hot damn another two that's actually all that we can carry so are we gonna be able to climb fine with this we should be able to yeah easy peasy and it's gonna go straight back to here two extra chunks of hematite another one over here jeez we're doing very well from this one alone even more over here Oh, another two that we can't carry. Yep. I think that's all that's on this level. Oh, nope, I'm wrong. <laughs> There's more up here as well. Now, just check out these corners to be certain. No, we're good. Okay, all right. So, peeking down over the edge here, we can get sight of a few things. Zincite, lots and lots of galena, and there is some just straight up iron ore there. So we are going to try and climb down to this one because it goes a little bit further still. We should be fine to climb. It's okay. It's dangerous, but we can manage. And then this one, we will peak and it's just some large rocks. Okay, so we'll start to... No, 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 no. <laughs> we want to climb to the north. <laughs> ah, dear. That was uh, scary for a second there. I didn't know if we were having trouble getting out of it. Ah, but there we go. We do have another one to have a look at. So we'll drop off the resources that we have into the Travois, and we're going to have a look at jumping down probably just onto this level here. Okay, all right, so we're looking for good spots to climb on. I think if we peek, we should be able to see most of this level, and indeed we can. So I'm just having a look at the ones that are on the side to see if there's anything special or hidden there. We've got hematite on that side, and no doubt we have some on this side as well. Indeed, we do. Okay. So, we are going to climb down, and we'll start a grabbing. Ah, okay, on the other side, so we will have to climb, no, we don't have to climb up for that. Just right there, okay, grabbed, and let's climb on down. Down here, 
we have many. And I think, I think that's all that we're going to be able to carry. We'll take the iron ore and then we'll come back down for the hematite. I do just want to peek down here though. Yeah, no, we're good. And out we go. Okay. Well, we fell somehow. Slip and fell. That's so bizarre because we haven't been having any trouble whatsoever. Or rather, we haven't been notified of having any trouble. Damn, that is uh, this damage that we really did not want to take right then. Well, I don't suppose you always get a choice, do you? Yep, we don't get any notification that we're having trouble. So I guess there's just always a chance that you can slip, which is rather scary. So um, we are going to limit our activities. Yep. <laughs> well, that's those two dealt with. We will mark them as explored. But as we know with these craters, we can always come back to them. As they have many other resources for us. Okay, we've got everything else back on. We're probably going to drink some of that Willowbark tea, just because, um, yeah, we are in severe pain now. And we're, <laughs> we're going to ride away from here. We're going to carry on to... Are we going to... Are we going to ride? Are we too heavy? Okay, hold up. <laughs> are we too heavy here? I mean, it's not... It's not that much weight. I think the issue is more with the yoke being damaged. Yeah, bone glues. It's so frustrating. We've got a fair amount of bone glue at home. Acceleration is two kilometers an hour. So, yeah. <laughs> it's moving. It's just moving slowly. As you can see, it takes a very long time to move at all. <laughs> That's not very helpful. Okay. So, the best thing that we can do is just try and transfer some of these things into uh, Sarah's pack, I think. Okay, it looks like we could literally put all of that in there, which is going to help a lot. So it's kind of the best way to think about this is that things were unbalanced. Having them on the travoir, it was digging too deep into the ground, which is not good for it. And uh, this is this is a lot better. <laughs> so now we are going to continue further on towards the east, but I want to do so cautiously because, um, well, we did get pretty injured back there, slipping and falling. And really, what we're going to be doing here is that if we see the first sign of trouble, we turn around. We start making our way back home. Oh, and it does look, this does look like we've gotten around that big wood. Okay, that is a massive, massive spider's nest. So we'll just give that a whole heap of space. Got a little dip in the woods here that I was wanting to check out. We've got some sizable dinosaurs all still okay though not infected okay we've reached the most northern point we can it looks like so heading back down again and stepping on the gas because we've got a praying mantis coming for us and there's a bone plate wolf around and many many camptosauruses that are currently being attacked by the bone plate wolf and by a bargast so yeah, that's going to be some infected dinos before too long. We've found a way further to the east. A little bit of a gap through the forest here, and it looks like we will be able to continue north here. I'm trying to be wary of how far we've traveled. That's a lot of... <laughs> that's a lot of baby dinosaurs. Jeez. Yeah, the populations are, are getting up there. <laughs> okay. Well, there's a big, big hatchery there. We've got a little swamp over here towards the west. Very, very small. And this really seems to open out now. Yeah, this is the other side of that big wood. It kind of seems to snake around this. I am kind of intrigued by what could be along the tree line. So we're going to follow it along for now. Not necessarily looking for a cave or anything like that, but just keeping my eyes peeled for unusual things we might even be able to shortcut through here i've just come back down quite a ways to the south there's a possibility we could go through there worth us being aware of because um yeah we are going to need to turn around eventually and it would be good to know that we have something of a pathway it looks like it's possible <laughs> we've got another great Another great big uh, crater, and we have triffids. So I feel like we are close to the origin of these things. I, I, I really don't want to get too close here, but I am intrigued by them. 
They are moving towards a singular source, so something has pissed them off. Oh, and now that singular source is us. So let's move. My gosh, look at them all. That's a lot of plant folk. Yep, and there's even more down here. Okay, there is definitely a tower around here. No sign of it yet. Oh, and there's a, a little bit of a sign of trouble. We've got a woodland white that's chasing after us. And oh boy, that's a full-on portal there. Yep. And there's rubble. Interesting. Piles of various metals, bricks and other building materials. Those are not materials from this world, Hilma. No siree. Oh man. I feel like we at least have to have a look around here. Okay, we are going to pull out the quarterstaff. And let's jump off of this thing. Okay. Very quickly dealt with. Now, on towards this. Well, hello there. There is no grass alive around here. Just a puddle of water. We're not seeing anything else on the ground. I'll be sure that we're not. Yep. There is a portal. There is a portal. Nothing, nothing going in, nothing coming out. Oh boy. I think every part of Hilma is screaming to walk through that thing. We have approached a portal before and it had seemingly no effect to Hilma. But I think seeing this here, there is certainly a healthy amount of curiosity. Maybe healthy isn't the right word, but bits and pieces of her old world are scattered around this thing. Yes, she is building a home for those survivors back at Camp Hope. But if she could get them back to the real world, to her world, is that a risk worth taking? Well, she'll have unsteady feet. But she steps onto the pile of rubble, struggling to keep her balance as the game tries to catch up with a very big save there. And it's just there, a point of light a tear in reality. I don't think we can tell much else about it. Let's step forwards. Into the tear. And just like that, we're ejected once again. Ejected or maybe rejected. Helma feels as though she has been teleported. She was over there and then all of a sudden, she's on the outskirts of this portal. Like she was thrown out. So maybe this portal is a one-way trip. In a meta sense, it does say portal in on the map. So maybe that is the case. It's a way in from the old world to this. Not a way out. But there is something. Something that we have seen before. Something that Helmet is unaware of. We can't actually see the effects of it here. But something is aware of us. And we already know that to be the case. Something has been aware of Hilma for a long time. That also seems to come from multiple sources. Let's put that quarter staff away for now. And um, <laughs> if we stand perfectly here, we can give Sarah the googly eye. We'll jump back onto Sarah and we are gonna carry on leaving that portal behind. We're gonna mark it as explored because Hilma, she did what she needed to do. And now, well, now it is afternoon, not late afternoon. So I think we're still safe to do a little bit more exploration here, but we want to do so cautiously. Okay. <laughs> it's a day for it. It is a day for it. Yet another portal. This one buried under rubble. But oh boy, there are things already here. A flaming eye 
an enormous disembodied eyeball the size of a person flying through the air through some unknown agency breathed an unnatural flickering blue flame. It possesses a blazing yellow iris with a slitted pupil like that of a cat and trails a set of flailing black tendrils as it slowly drifts about. Its unearthly presence fills you with dread at the prospect of falling under its baleful gaze. And there's two of them. Not only that, but there is a crack that is hostile towards us. This otherworldly hound is drawn to Hilma right now. And usually cracks don't care. They don't care at all, but something is causing them to care. And they care a lot. And oh boy, the eyes are upon Hilma. Staring at her, she feels sick. Sick to her stomach. She's violently nauseous. As she tries to steady herself, oh boy, tainted mind. You can't comprehend things around you, and and yeah, it doesn't seem like we can. Uh, Time is going at a weird rate for us right now, where I know it's probably difficult to tell, but Sarah's movements here are very difficult to control because so much is happening in between each moment. Ah, uh, yeah, those wasps aren't great. That's that's really not great. Okay, if we can get speed, that'd be fantastic. We need to get away from this area. Okay, to the north we go. Yeah, and I said we were going to try and take it easy, huh? Yup. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, I think we're kind of starting to get back our regular sense of self. Time seems to be flowing at the correct rate. We have decent control of the cart. Yikes, that was, um, that was a lot. Is there another? I think there's another portal. Yup. This whole area up here to the north is just littered with portals. What is going on? Okay, well, we need to be very cautious to not crash this thing. I mean, if we do, it's not the end of the world. It would suck because it would be very difficult to get back and repair it, but we'd be alive. Okay. Okay. We are suddenly covered in ectoplasm. Bile. And we cannot see. We're stopping right now. We're not going to risk running into anything. Touched mind. Yup. We're flooded with imagery. We're going to take a moment on the back of Sarah here. We're going to jump off towards the side. And as we try and clear off this otherworldly residue, that is where I'm going to be wrapping things up for today. This feels like the perfect moment in which to leave Hilma on the precipice of the unknown. We are far to the north and eyes are upon us. More than just the watchers are aware. And back at home, Camp Hope continues, with structures rising and friendships being forged. I think there was a part of Hilma that was hoping to find some kind, some trail of sink, but we have seen nothing. Where, oh where, could sink be? Yet another mystery. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. For now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned.